with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he speaks about insan, insan, this is gender neutral. Okay, insan. Ya ayyuhal insan. Nas. Not speaking to man or woman. When we speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not speaking about masculine or feminine. Quran has names for Allah and the name ism al-Azam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ism Jalala, and all his names, his different names which we're going to be basing our lecture on right now. Mainly in the Quran, when you speak about Allah when he's in, in terms of uh, third person, when you say he, what do we say? Huwa. We say huwa. Right? La ilaha illa hu. We don't say here. But that doesn't mean masculine huwa. So we're going to be speaking about Arabic grammar here. The Arabic grammarians agree that the words they use within Arabic huwa here is gender neutral as well. It's not because it's a masculine term. It's the default term. Yani sometimes the Quran may refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as that. Right? Out of respect though, you don't say it. You don't call Allah it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we say huwa. La ilaha illa hu. We don't call him father. Like in Christianity. Okay? In Christianity, there is more of this, this sense of, of... Oh, in Islam, there is patriarchy. We'll speak about that. There is more of this patriarchal sense when it comes to God, when it comes to God being the Father. But in Islam, we don't have that. Right? He's no father. He doesn't have a son. He's not a father to any son. He hasn't begotten any children. He's not father of any of us. He's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above all gender. So first of all, we don't have that problem within Islam. Allah has no gender. Allah has no body. Allah is not man or woman or any of that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does have the uh, masculine and feminine names. These names which have been derived from the words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used within the Quran, from the words that the Prophet and the Imams called Allah upon with, and from his attributes, the things that he does in the world, his actions. Several of these names. He has loads of names. And we all know about Allah's 99 names, right? But he has even more names than that. There are several names. 99 names is in one of the hadith. But there are many names you can call upon Allah with. And you can connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his different names. He has different names for different things. Allah is one. Allah isn't a body. Allah is not split into parts. Allah is one. He is simple. As in, he's not in parts. You can't take a part of him away. But he has these names. Yani, which names am I talking about? We say, Bismillah, Al-Rahman, Al-Rahim. Those are some of his names. Okay? Depending on which name you need, sometimes, in situation, you'd call upon a certain name. This is the power that you want to manifest right now. This is what you want to see in your life. When you're in trouble and you call out, Ya Fatah, okay? open the doors for me. Okay? You're calling upon the right names. Yani when I'm when I'm sick, I'm a big baby when I'm sick. Okay, Yo, my wife would tell you guys that. And it's funny. I'll be sick and I need to call upon God's strong names when I'm sick. I just shout, Ya Jabbar. And I hold and I feel better. But it's a very powerful name. So I'm like, Ya Shadidul Aqab. And my wife gets scared. She goes, No, no, Ya Rauf. Ya Rahim. Right? Then we have to balance that out. She balances it out. So, depending on what situation you're in, you would call upon those names. Allah's names are split into two. Everything is like this. Everything's in cycles. Yeah? You have summer, you have winter. You have man, you have woman. You have yin, you have yang. Okay? You have these reflections, these cycles. Everything is this way. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names, it's the same thing. You have the names of beauty and the names of majesty. That's the category of God's names. So God is one. Then you split the names into two. The names of Jamal and the names of Jalal. Okay? Jamal and Jalal. Is everyone with me so far? Good. Jamal and Jalal. Beauty and majesty. Those are the two reflections. Those are the two uh, main categories of God's attributes, and then they are manifested into the world. What are some of the names of Jamal? 
like I just mentioned, right? Why when I'm sick, I call out the names of Jalal and my wife called out the names of Jamal to balance it out because maybe the names of Jalal are scary sometimes. So you say Al-Jabbar, the forceful one. Al-Hakim, the judge. Al-Qawi, the strong. These are all names of Jalal, names of majesty. They are more absolute. They, are, they have an absolute personality to them. Whereas the names of Jamal, like what? Al-Ra'uf, the kind. And Al-Rahim. These, the most merciful. These names are more beautiful names, kind names. Al-Rahman, the merciful. This is what you call upon when you want to be forgiven for your sins. You don't call upon Al-Jabbar when you're doing Tawbah. You're scared right now. You call upon Al-Wadud, Al-Ra'uf, Al-Rahman, Al-Rahim. So these are the different categories. And the names are split. That's why you have heaven, you have hell. You have, you see? You see this, this dichotomy? This is all throughout the Islamic tradition. This is even outside the Islamic tradition. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from that world, the real world, He manifested into this world. What did He manifest? He manifested the names of Jamal and the names of Jalal. How? The names of Jamal manifested into Eve. And the names of Jalal manifested into Adam. And so Jamal became woman. And Jalal became man. This is the explanation as to why Islam cannot accept homosexuality. An actual a homosexual girl was actually asking me last year. She's like, why? Why, do, why are you Muslims against it? I said, I'll explain to you from my perspective. Okay, I said, I'm Muslim, of course. My life is to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, I understand. And then I explained this. Allah has names. Jamal, Jalal. Names of beauty and majesty, they were manifested into this world. The names of Jalal became man. The names of Jamal became woman. So majesty became man. And beauty became woman. So man is absolute and woman is infinite. That's what it is. Infinity and absoluteness. Okay? How do I get to know Allah? One, Tawheed. How do I come back to Tawheed? To one, I must bring Jamal and Jalal together. You understand? You see where I'm going with this? So, by the way, man has Jamal in him. Doesn't mean you're completely Jalal. No, no, no. They have, you have feminine aspects within yourself. You have Jamal. And woman has Jalal. But the predominant is Jalal. And the predominant in woman is Jamal. And the way that you are to bring them together, to be complementary, as the brother was saying, how do we complement each other? Tawheed. You have to bring Jamal and Jalal together. You can't be, this is what homosexuality is. What's homosexuality? It's an imbalance. It's too much Jalal, Jalal. Or Jamal, Jamal. You can't have that. You can't have Tawheed. With just beauty or just majesty. You need to bring beauty and majesty together. And then you understand what intercourse is. How was the world created? The world we say came from Allah's mercy, right? It was Allah's mercy that created the world. Allah's rahmah. What's rahmah? What kind of name? Ism Jamal. Right? So the world came from beauty. Man is surrounded by the feminine aspect. His creation comes from the feminine, rahmah. What is your womb called in Arabic? Raham. Your Raham, your Raham, the woman's womb is a manifestation of God's Rahma. Man doesn't have the womb. The Raham comes from Rahma. And then, subhanAllah, it creates. So then it goes back to Al Khaliq, the Creator. The same way Allah created us from His mercy. So man is surrounded by the feminine, he's overcome by it, encompassed by it. And man is supposed to learn from woman these feminine aspects that will complete him to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave man certain dominion over woman in this dunya. They have different roles, which we're going to speak about. The fact that they're different, they have different roles. Man had dominion over woman. But man over history, over civilization, rebelled against Allah. Man rebelled against God. Man let power come to his head. Man's ego took over. So man was destroyed. 
And as woman watched on and saw man rebel against God, woman rebelled against man. Instead of woman staying in the way that she was supposed to be, she saw the hypocrisy of man and decided I rebelled against God, I will rebel against man. And then you have society as it is today where we don't know what we are anymore. 